We are going to make more Kirkland's copycats today. Yes, even more because I've been on a roll lately with these. These are all budget-friendly dupes of expensive high-end decor. So if you like to get crafty and are on a budget, then let's get started on the first Christmas DIY. I love creating elegant wreaths. I thought this one from Kirkland's was so beautiful with the black and white and green and red. There are even a few pine cones, which is a nice touch. The contrast between the sharp black and white pattern with the organic natural elements is what makes this wreath so special. This is regularly priced at $100, but was on sale for $75 when I took this screenshot. But you know what? That is still a lot of money for a wreath when I know we can make this for way less. You could either use a wire wreath form like this one, or you could go with one of these styrofoam rings, which is also from Dollar Tree. I found this buffalo check ribbon at Dollar Tree too. I know it's a little bit different than the hound's tooth pattern in our inspiration, but it's close enough to give our wreath the same look and feel. I tried to wrap the ribbon and overlap the edges as evenly as possible. And as you can probably tell from the looks of this styrofoam ring, I like to reuse my craft supplies. Sometimes I like to switch up the color schemes. So maybe one year I'll do traditional red and green and another year I may go with all neutrals. So I like my projects to be sturdy, but I also have in the back of my mind that I may want to disassemble this at some point and create a new wreath. So I'm using minimal glue only where necessary, which was at the beginning and at the end of this ribbon. The ribbon did not cover the entire ring, but that's okay because we will be using lots of florals to cover that part. I got most of these florals from Dollar Tree, and since there aren't any poinsettias on our inspiration piece, I will be removing those. You can trim off the extra stems or just put something else on there. Today I'm joining my friend Lynn from Hot Mess and Hot Glue. She does so many fun Dollar Tree DIYs over on her channel and we thought it would be fun to both do Christmas crafts so that you guys would have twice the Christmas inspiration to watch. So after you're done with my video, make sure to check out Lynn's video, which I will link in that description box below. If you're new here, welcome to Artsy Cupcake. My name is Maria, and my passion is getting creative in your home. I share weekly home decor inspiration in the form of crafts and DIYs, and I love using Dollar Tree items so that all my DIYs are budget friendly too. If you are as obsessed with Dollar Tree as I am and you love crafts, then make sure to hit that subscribe button so you can become part of the Artsy Cupcake crew. The last step is to use floral wire and a little hot glue to attach everything together. So here were the supplies that we had to pick up for this project. And here is mine compared to the Kirkland's one. I put that original price tag on there because those markdowns never last long enough, do they? Isn't this days until Christmas sign so cute? I've been loving countdown to Christmas signs this season and I made one in my last video too. 
but I know we can make this one for way less than $60. We'll start with this wooden house, which I found at Dollar Tree in the $5 section. It was originally a raw wood color and I had used it for another project. I actually used that ribbon on the wreath we just made, but we'll be using the back of this house for our project. I started by sanding that area where the ribbon had been glued down and then I painted this a brownish gray color, kind of a grayish, and the paint was a little drippy, so I used a dry sponge brush to smooth it out. I like the texture that the sponge brush gave the paint. For the chimney, I used a Jenga block and measured the angle that I needed to cut so that it would sit nicely against the top of the roof. Then I set that aside and I measured the width and the height of the house so I could go ahead and work on the printables. I will have this printable that I made linked below so you can go to my blog and download it for free if you're interested. I am a graphic designer for a living so making these printables are no big deal and I love sharing them with you so that you can have fun crafting and well, it just makes it that much easier to get started on a fun project for yourself. First, I printed out a test to make sure I liked the placement of everything. I decided that the number sign was too close to the wording, so I made that number sign a little bit smaller to give the words some breathing room. And here's our final printable for the front. I traced the house and then trimmed it out. We'll be using Super 77 to stick the paper to the wooden house. I like to use a glove and a paper clip to make this a little easier and a little bit less messy. I'm going to run outside, give this a spray, and then I'll be right back to smooth it down. And look how seamless this is on the edges. You can barely tell that this was just a plain piece of white paper a few minutes ago. Okay, now for the number signs. I'm going to glue these to a piece of poster board that I found at Dollar Tree. And the back of this poster board is gold, so it will look dressy on the backs of these signs. I'm going to stick the paper on this and then trim them out and that will give them a heavy feeling so they'll hang nicely on our house. And these will be part of those printables that you can download. I used a hole punch to create the round hole in the center top of each sign. Then I organized these so they would be ready to hang. Oh, and a super fun bonus about using this little wooden house is that the back doubles as a place to store the other number signs. Next, we'll mark where the nail will go and we'll just hammer that in. I used a short nail so it wouldn't pop through on the other side of the house. If you wanted to decorate this a little bit more, you could add some fluffy white fabric to look like snow on the roof, or you could even attach some bushes to the front by using some moss. There are lots of ways you could dress this up and make it your own depending on what kind of style you're going for. But I'm going to go ahead and keep mine simple. I will attach that little chimney onto the top and it's a perfect fit. I'm going to make my wreath a little different than the Kirkland's one, and that's what is so fun about these dupes. 
is we're looking at these home decor pieces as inspiration and then we're taking our own spin on them. Art throughout history has been inspired by things that already existed, whether it was someone's memory of a place or location, or it was something that they saw in nature. I was kind of back and forth on if I should add the bells, I tend to err on the side of simplicity versus overcomplicating a design, so I decided I liked the look of just the red and green on the wreath. I also thought about adding a little smoke off the chimney, but I decided against that too. It would have been cute though, I might add it later. Here were the supplies we needed, and here is mine compared to the Kirkland's one. I think this was a pretty close dupe for so much less money than the original, but let me know what you think in the comment section below. I always like to throw in a super easy one at the end, just in case you're feeling like these were too hard or you don't have the supplies on hand. So hopefully this last DIY will get you excited to try it because of how simple it is to put together. So let's make this pretty snowflake sign for way less than $45. I removed the canvas off of a plain white canvas from Dollar Tree and I was left with this wooden frame. You can see the staples on the corners, so a little wood filler and that should fix them from looking so obvious. I used some gray and brown paint and brushed this on, and then I went over a few areas with just the dark brown so it wouldn't look so flat. For the backing, we will be using some foam core from Dollar Tree. I traced the size of the inside, and I know the inspiration has a black line around the edge, but I thought it would be fun to do something a little bit different, and I am creating the border with buffalo check ribbon. If you wanted to do just a black border, you could mask off the edges and use some paint to get that look. Now that we have our base, there are a couple different ways that you could create that snowflake. You could use wooden shims, or you could go with wooden dowels and skewers from Dollar Tree. You could cut those with miter shears to get the angles on the ends so that the pieces attach together correctly. Last year I did a Pottery Barn dupe of a snowflake sign and I used black Jenga blocks for that one and I will link that video just in case you're curious. But again, on this one we're going to take our own spin and we're going to use washi tape. This is probably the easiest way to do this and it's really fun because you can mix and match the colors and patterns of the tape to suit your style and your home decor. I'm going to use a variety of the black and white washi tape, and I did end up overlapping some of the tape to give it a finished look on some of those more see-through areas. Then I used some glue to attach the frame over the top. Let's see how it came out. we
here were the supplies we used and the comparison to the Kirkland's version. I ended up placing my snowflake sign above these coat hooks in the entryway and I love how it dresses up the space and it looks so festive. If you liked these dupes and all that money we saved, then make sure to hit that subscribe button before you go. That way you'll know when I post more dupes and DIYs. And show Lynn's video some love and let her know that I sent you. I will put her video link in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a creative day. Bye.